Hello and welcome to our channel. Today we have for you a story of a guy waiting at a red light with his dog late at night. But little does he know, something terrifying is about to unfold. Don't miss a single second of this heart-pounding story. The horror about to start. Let's go! Driving late at night was never something I looked forward to. There were just too many things that might go wrong. A headlight could go out, I could get lost, fall asleep behind the wheel, or, worst of all, break down with no one else around to help. But I had a meeting in a few hours and had previously taken as much time off as I could. Dealing with sick parents was difficult, especially when you had to pay to their medical bills. I turned my eyes to Samuel, who was sleeping in the back seat, his white-tipped ears relaxed on the side of his head, his paws twitching as if someone was tickling his feet. Anyway, he was too exhausted to wake up. As we reached a stoplight, I moaned and returned my focus to the road. I had no idea why they had things strewn throughout the long, empty length of highway. It's not like anyone else was going to be up at 2 a.m. If they were, they were probably as annoyed by the stop as I was. All I wanted to do was go home. To get some rest before pulling myself out of bed for work. We came to a stop after easing off the brake. The car's front end kissed a long white line that you were permitted to cross. Sighing. I leaned back against my seat and closed my eyes for a bit. This was a mistake. Every part of me wanted to cuddle up on the back seat next to Samuel and sleep. He'd be caring and ready to share. He'd probably give me a couple kisses on the cheek just to be safe before using me as a pillow. I forced my eyes open, muttering a curse, to see the light still red and blindingly bright. Its vibrant red glow reflected over the dark road creating a radius of light that far exceeded standard stoplights and increased with each second. Part of me knew it was impossible to have such a bright street light. There were standards to follow for driving safety, but there it was. Like an angler fish enticing and naive victims. In a world of darkness, she glows brightly. Change already, I grumbled, my patience fading. Nothing was worse than having to sit and wait at an unusually long light. This is unbelievable, Samuel. Startling as soon as I said his name, Samuel popped his head out between the driver and passenger seats, ears swiveling about on high alert. I had the sensation he could hear the unusual red lights humming. That the power stored there was so powerful that it fried the wires covered in black metal. Still, the light remained the same. My impatience turned to anger, and I put my vehicle in park before opening the driver's side door, against my better judgment. When I stopped him, Samuel made a move to jump into my now empty seat. Stay. I'm just taking a look, okay? Something must break. I petted Samuel on the head and rolled down the window so he could still see me before closing the door. He hated it when I was out of sight, so I hoped this might calm him down. Sure, I knew I could easily run the red light, but I had the worst luck someone could have. If I tried such a little infraction in the middle of nowhere, a cop would definitely fall from the sky to ticket me. I searched the roadside for an electricity box while running my fingers through my hair. Perhaps someone crashed it and instead of reporting the incident, drove away leaving everything inside somewhat confused. But, as far as I could see, there was no electrical box. I returned to the road crossing, rolling my eyes. Walking out into the middle of it, I looked left and right, hoping that an electricity box may be on one of the other roads. I put my hands into my pockets. I reached for my phone, hoping that the flashlight might show something I had missed. I pulled the device from my pocket, fingers brushing against it, as a gust of wind ran its ice-cold fingers down my spine. It scared me so much that I dropped my phone. 
the flashlight mysteriously turned on and blinded me with red light as it dropped face down on the road. That wasn't right. How could that possibly be red? I bent down to get my phone, blinking rapidly, as another gust of wind blew through the intersection. It was followed by the smell of thick, stifling oxygen. I didn't see the dense fog spreading over the road until my phone's red light danced through the choking fog. Fantastic. There's fog now. How am I going to drive in this? I turned on my heel, returning my phone to my pocket. I could just go back in the car and wait for the fog to pass. It never lasted more than a half hour in my experience, but when I turned back, I was faced with even more fog. There was no sign of the car. I thought I was too tired to remember my journey away from the car. I must have gone around in the wrong direction, because after completing a full circle, my heart started pounding in my chest. I couldn't see much more than a few inches in front of me. Samuel? My frightened voice rang out. One he could clearly hear, and as if on time, he barked in return. Good job, Samuel. Continue to bark. He made a couple more calls, much to my relief. I tried to reach them while listening closely. Putting one foot in front of the other was simple enough until my feet vanished in the fog. Swallowing deeply, I tried not to worry anymore, but the scenario was so strange that I thought I was crazy. I didn't appear to be getting any closer to Samuel no matter how many steps I took or how loudly Samuel barked. I closed my eyes again, stifling a frightened shout. That's when it all started. Maybe I had slept after all. Perhaps I was dreaming. But as I opened my eyes, I was faced by a group of lifeless ones. A thin pale man stood in front of me. Their eyes were blurry and white. Blind. Their skin is transparent and yellow, and their hair is sparse and wispy. What the fuck is going on? I scrambled back a few feet, trying to put as much distance between myself and the stranger as possible. My eyes were drawn to their feet at that point. Shoes fragments were stuck to their ankles and toes with fresh and dried blood. Their skin was raw, blistered, and torn. Their left foot was even worse than their right, with bone visible on the tips of their toes. Oh my goodness! Sir! Are you in need of assistance? The words had hardly left my mouth when another burst of wind blew a new cloud of fog over the guy. I heard crying to my left. I turned towards the sound, my heart racing. It was caused by a young woman stumbling about and covering her eyes, her bare feet leaving a trail of blood in her trail. Ma'am? The fog had returned. It swept her away, just as it did the man, and it was only then that I realized it was also carrying me away. The red street light became brighter and brighter until it was uncomfortable. Were these people lost? Was I also lost? Would I turn out to be like them? I tried to come up with a logical end to this disaster, taking desperate breaths of air. There has to be a reason for what I was seeing, but when a third person stood in front of me, I ran. I was at a loss for what to do. I needed to get my car and get out of there as soon as possible. Samuel! 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 My words ripped from my throat, rough and rough. This time, there was no reaction. I was by myself. Now, I went about, arms extending and hands clutching, tears flowing down my cheeks. All I wanted to do was go for my truck's familiar metal frame and lock myself inside. I pressed on, shivering from head to toe with a heavy coat of sweat coating my skin. I had no idea how far I had walked. Whether it was hours or days, all I could think about was despair and anger. Rage to escape the oppressive red light. It reflected off the fog that was pelting my eyes from every direction. 
my retinas began to hurt as the intensity increased. That's why I closed my eyes, swearing never to open them again. That didn't work either. The light was so bright that it burned through the backs of my eyelids and into my head. I was losing any semblance of sanity. I was lost in the middle of nowhere, weak, fatigued, and blind. I knew I was going to die here. Still, my legs moved until they couldn't anymore, leaving me in a crumpled heap on what I imagined was the road. The fog swallowed me like a flesh-eating beast, and a part of me wanted it to win. To eat me and put an end to my suffering. A moist slobbery tongue ran across my cheek, as if it felt my desire. I knew I was done when hot breath swept over my face. It had finally beaten me to the ground. That dumb red light had won. Then, in my dying ears, a quiet soothing bark resonated, and the greatest sensation of relief I'd ever known swept over me. Samuel. I'm not sure what happened after that. All I know is that I regained consciousness in a foggy white room with constant beeping bombarding my senses. When a door slipped open and someone dressed in a lab coat strolled in, I could barely make out a pair of wires dancing down my arms. Ah, you've woken up. How are your eyes? They asked, their tone mild yet probing. I can hardly see, I rasped, my throat filled with razor blades. I see. We can have an optometrist in here soon. I didn't let her complete her sentence. Can you tell me what happened? I demanded, conscious of the doctor draping a blanket across my stomach. I felt a tinge of chill rushing down my toes. Officers discovered you miles away from your car well into the next county. You didn't have your shoes, the doctor remarked, pausing as though considering whether or not to tell me more. To be honest, I had no recollection of losing my sneakers. Your feet had been shredded. In the next days, you'll require skin grafts to help them recover. The cops were led to you by your dog. They heard you were babbling about a red light when they discovered you. My heart dropped into my stomach as the final two words of her statement registered, and everything from the previous night came rushing back to me. The bright red light burning into my eyes was all I could see. I couldn't take my eyes away, no matter how hard I tried. Even as a cloud of fog swept in to swallow me, we looked at one other. Smother me. Kill me one mile at a time while I wandered mindlessly in red silence. It was in this hospital room with me. I could feel it. The same sense of approaching doom, as well as the rising pain in my eyes. It was not going to abandon me. Not now, and never again. Sir, please relax. You're okay. In my ears, the doctor's words was muted, intermixed by the sound of increasing beeps. She called for help, her voice filled with the fear and anxiety I was feeling. People rushed around me, pushing and prodding, but all I saw was that light. My feet were bloody and red. Of course, the medics and cops started talking to each other after that. They said I suffered a mental break the night of the drive, and the consequences lasted into my hospital stay. That my parents' stress had caused something in me. Being sleepy and driving didn't help. Something deep within of me cracked. They wanted a psychological examination to aid me, but it didn't make a difference. All I could see was red after the doctor delivered those terrible words. It never went away. The color never faded. Not until I accomplished it. They informed me that they would be unable to save my eyes. That was all okay. I didn't want to see that annoying red light again. Nobody believed me no matter how many times I told them my tale. Not the doctors, psychologists, or anybody else. I saw what I saw. I went through it and have the scars to show it. Maybe you'll believe me. Maybe not. 
Just pay attention when I say this. Do not drive in the early morning hours. Don't waste time as I did at a red light. Run it. Run as fast as you can and don't look back. A ticket is less painful than tearing your own eyes out. And if you do stop at a red light and it looks back at you for much too long and with far too much intensity, do not get out of your car. An angler fish recognizes when it has caught its prey, knows how to keep it trapped behind a set of teeth that cannot be removed without help, knows how to slowly eat you. What about those red lights? They're all hooks. And if you don't watch out, the fog will find you. The same way it found me. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like to support us and help us improve our content. We would really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to share this video with your friends and family. And if you haven't already, be sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notifications bell so you don't miss any of our future videos. We would love to hear your thoughts on this story, so leave us a comment and let us know what you thought. And if there's a specific kind of story you'd like to see us cover in the next video, we'd love to hear that too. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.